When it comes to the offseason, not every team is built equal. Clearly, some franchises out there know how to make moves much better than others. And this free agency period really has highlighted that. Well, nearly a dozen NFL teams creatively used the 2024 free agent market to address roster holes and bolster their championship hopes. Others, well, they inexplicably used it to make their vulnerable rosters just a whole lot worse. With the bulk of the top 2024 NFL free agents now signed to new teams, how about we dive into five teams who won free agency this year and five who totally blew it? You know, my goal is to um, be ready by training camp and um, be able to be healthy for the season, so... One, New York Jets. Going into this offseason, the Jets had two pressing needs, reshaping the offensive line and getting a capable number two wide receiver to help Garrett Wilson. And hey, mission accomplished. The Jets' biggest signing was longtime Dallas Cowboys Pro Bowl offensive tackle and future Hall of Famer Tyron Smith, who signed a one-year contract worth only $6.5 million guaranteed. Smith has had problems staying healthy, but he's still an elite pass blocker when he's on the field. If he can avoid the injury bug, the Jets will have the perfect short-term solution as Rodgers' blindside protector. The Jets also snagged ex-Baltimore Ravens standout John Simpson on a two-year pact worth $12 million, throw in the trade acquisition of Morgan Moses, and that is now three brand new starters on the O-line. Oh, and former Los Angeles Chargers star and two-time 1,000-yard wide receiver Mike Williams signed a one-year deal worth a max value of $15 million. And lastly, bringing in Tyrod Taylor as Rodgers' backup was a savvy piece of work by GM Joe Douglas. Obviously, you hope that Rodgers just returns to full strength, but Taylor's still miles better as a backup than Zach frickin' Wilson. The Jets have no more excuses now. It is playoffs or bust in 2024, pure and simple. Blew it, Dallas Cowboys. Dallas owner Jerry Jones made headlines when he said that the Cowboys would go all in this offseason. And when he said that, you figured it meant spending money and maybe trying to make this roster better, not worse. But lo and behold, the never fails to disappoint Cowboys owner has done nothing to make this team better. We watched two starting offensive linemen, Tyron Smith and Tyler Biotish, leave for the Jets and Washington respectively. So how did their departures, Smiths especially, make Dallas better? in the short term again? Two-time 1,000-yard rusher Tony Poehler bolted for Tennessee on a three-year deal, leaving Dallas without a proven RB1 in the backfield. So how do you not make a splash for someone like, I don't know, Josh Jacobs, Saquon Barkley, or Derrick Henry? Dallas also lost two quality edge rushers in Dante Fowler and Dorrance Armstrong, who followed Dan Quinn to DC. And this is all before we even mention that America's team let Pro Bowl corner Stephon Gilmore walk. The Cowboys' biggest acquisition through the first three weeks of the new year was past his prime linebacker Eric Kendricks. Sheesh, if that's Jerry's idea of all in, then man, the Cowboys are just doomed. One, Houston Texans. Fresh off an AFC South Division winning campaign and elite appearance, the Texans entered the offseason with a mountain of cap space, and GM Nick Casario did not sit on that money for long. The Texans' big prize was Daniel Hunter, who signed a two-year deal with $49 million after posting a career-high 16.5 sacks with the Minnesota Vikings. The four-time pro bowler has five seasons of double-digit sacks on his resume, and now Hunter gets the opportunity to join forces with rising superstar Will Anderson Jr., who won 2023 Defensive Rookie of the Year honors after posting seven sacks. But now not stopping there, Casario also signed ex-Tennessee Titan stalwart Danico Autry to a two-year pact worth a modest $20 million. And like a fine wine, Autry just seems to get better with age. Having posted a career-high 11.5 sacks at the age of 33 last year, the French Seven also added former Texans linebacker Aziz Alshair to a three-year pact worth $34 million. With two seasons of 100-plus tackles under his belt, Alshair should be a quality starter in D'Amico Ryan's defense. The former first-round picks in corners Jeff Okuda and CJ Henderson were also signed to no-risk one-year deals. I mean, hey, it's worth seeing if Ryans can somehow unlock their potential and get rid of that bust label from both these guys. Houston already had a borderline top-10 defense, and then Casario just went in and signed two stud pass rushers in Autry and Hunter to compliment Anderson Jr. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is how you warn the likes of Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, and Lamar Jackson in the AFC that you are coming for them. The Texans look poised to take that big next step forward after a phenomenal show in free agency.
Blew it, Miami Dolphins. If Miami is truly convinced that they can close the gap with the other powerhouses in the AFC, they certainly have an interesting way of showing it. In an all-time mind-numbing move, the Dolphins didn't bother to extend nor at least place the franchise tag on Christian Wilkins. Instead, the superstar defensive lineman was lost for literally nothing when he signed with the Las Vegas Raiders. They had to cut Pro Bowl corner Xavier Howard, yes, and no way they could match the $100 million that the Carolina Panthers gave to standout guard Robert Hunt, but Miami is unquestionably worse without those two. Both these things can be true. Miami also lost to Sean Elliott, Andrew Van Ginkle, and Brandon Jones on defense not to mention Jerome Baker, who had to be cut in a cap-saving move as well. No offense to center Aaron Brewer and tight end Johnny Smith, but, uh, well, those two don't really move the needle on offense. And though they got veteran corner Kendall Fuller on a two-year deal with $15 million, he's still a downgrade from Xavier Howard. Heading into the offseason, Miami had a leaky offensive line and a defense filled with holes. For a team that's supposed to be in win-now mode, it's not ideal that they've gotten worse in both those areas. All thanks to absolutely baffling inactivity, in free agency. 1. Jacksonville Jaguars The Jaguars knew that they couldn't overpay to keep Calvin Ridley, so we're not holding it against them and letting him walk to Tennessee for $92 million. But keep in mind that Christian Kirk is the Jaguars' number one receiver, so his return to the field will help offset Ridley's departure, and even if Gabe Davis was an overpay at $39 million, his game-breaking speed and ability to stretch the field will also semi-make up for Ridley's loss. The vulnerable offensive line was also given a boost with the two-year deal for Pro Bowl center Mitch Morse, whom the Buffalo Bills cut in a cap-saving move. I mean, what can we say? Josh Allen's loss is Trevor Lawrence's game. But that was only on the offensive side of the ball. You see, GM Trent Baalke knew that the main priority was addressing a defense that finished 17th in scoring and 26th against the pass. And, well, let's just say that he delivered. Following his stunning release from the San Francisco 49ers, standout pass rusher Eric Armstead joined the Jaguars on a three-year deal with $43.5 million. A pass rushing trio of Armstead, Trayvon Walker, and Josh Allen? That right there is how you build a defensive line, folks. The secondary will also benefit from the signings of safety Darnell Savage and Ronald Darby, who allowed just a 44.2 completion percentage and a 63.3 passer rating when targeted in Baltimore last year. So T-Law still has weaponry and a rebuilt O-line. The defense is even deeper now with a rebuilt secondary and the arrival of Armstead. All right, no more excuses. The Jaguars have to return to the postseason after all these savvy moves. Blew it, Minnesota Vikings. It's not hard to argue that letting Kirk Cousins walk for greener pastures was a necessary evil for the Vikings. Paying almost $200 million to a 36-year-old coming off a torn Achilles with one playoff win on his resume is just way too risky. We get it. But that doesn't excuse the Vikings from blowing it the rest of the way in free agency. They didn't do a darn thing to improve for 2024. But GM Kwesi Odolfo Mensah didn't exactly signal a plan to fully rebuild either, so as it stands, and he is content to remain in the mushy middle. Instead of re-upping superstar edge rusher Daniel Hunter, the Vikings overpaid Jonathan Grenard and gave him $76 million over four frickin' years. Though newcomers Blake Cashman and Andrew Van Ginkle are both coming off career years, the Vikings are taking a big risk by giving them both 20 plus million dollar deals. There is absolutely zero guarantees that they'll build off their respective breakout seasons, man. Even giving Sam Darnold, likely a bridge QB, a one-year deal with 10 million feels a little rich. Why not just sign Russell Wilson, who is available for the the veterans minimum, or heck, even Jameis Winston. Minnesota lost its starting QB and replaced him with a mega draft boss. They lost their defense in Hunter and are banking on Grenard to build off an improbable career year. So, remind us how free agency allowed these guys to get closer to a Super Bowl again while they watched each of their three NFC North rivals crush it in free agency and in the trade markets? Because we aren't seeing it. 1. Washington Commanders It's awfully difficult for Commanders fans to complain about the offseason in year two under Josh Harris's ownership. New head coach, new GM, a new QB coming with the number two pick and plenty of splashy free agent signings. If the majority of these guys come as advertised, well, it won't be long until the Commanders re-emerge as a playoff contender. The atrocious outline that allowed 65 sacks a year ago just signed Tyler Biotish and Nick Allegretti to bolster the group. Ex-Los Angeles Chargers star running back and fantasy football darling Austin Eckler 
Butler was also brought in on a two-year deal worth up to $11.4 million. So there you go, a new weapon for your incoming rookie QB. The worst defense from a year ago also signed future Hall of Famer Bobby Wagner, do-it-all safety Jeremy Chin, and pass-rushing standouts Dorrance Armstrong, Frankie Luru, and Dante Fowler. Not saying all these signings will pan out, but uh, there's just no way the O-line and defense can be that helpless again with all of these newbies. The commanders aced it in free agency by bringing in a bunch of impact players, none of which were handed more than $33 million. For the first time in forever, the commanders actually did well in free agency. Blew it, New York Giants. It is very hard to comprehend the Giants' game plan following a disastrous 2023 season. Saquon Barkley wasn't dealt ahead of the trade deadline, so they lost him for nothing in free agency to the arch-rival Philadelphia Eagles. Stalwart safety Xavier McKinney also bolted after signing a four-year deal with the Green Bay Packers. Tyrod Taylor was a serviceable backup to Daniel Jones, but he too left to sign with the Jets. The G-men downgraded there by signing Drew Locke as DJ's backup. So far, GM Joe Shane's biggest free agent signing was running back Devin Singletary, someone who is several tiers below Barkley, and offensive linemen Jermaine Illuminor and John Runyon. Illuminor gave up six sacks last season per Pro Football Focus, and PFF graded Runyon at 54.7. Not sure how giving these two multi-year deals makes the Giants O-line and cap situation any better. Hey, good on Shane for winning the Brian Burns trade with Carolina, but this already sluggish offense just looks way worse. He needed to add quality line linemen, playmaking wideouts, and reliable cover corners. Shane didn't do any of that. Somehow, a 6-1 team from 2023 already looks a lot worse heading into the draft, which is really saying something. 1. Philadelphia Eagles Howie Roseman did not play around following the Eagles' humiliating late-season collapse. Roseman's biggest move was signing former New York Giants star running back Saquon Barkley to a three-year deal worth $37.75 million. Now, that might be an overpay for an injury-prone guy at a devaluing position, but a healthy Barkley is a top-five running back in the game. If he stays healthy, Barkley brings another element to the high-flying Eagles offense, and that should be a very terrifying thought for the rest of the league. Old friend C.J. Gardner-Johnson was brought back on a three-year $27 million deal after a one-year stop at the Detroit Lions. Gardner-Johnson had a career year with Philly in 2022 and should find himself right back at home, bringing a much-needed boost to a secondary that took a massive step back in 2023. Though losing Hassan Reddick hurts, the Jets offset some of the damage well in advance by signing ex-Jets star edge rusher Bryce Huff to a three-year deal worth $51.1 million. With Huff in the fold, the Eagles' stout front seven shouldn't miss a beat. The Eagles haven't even hit the draft yet, and that is where Roseman does his best work. But based on his work in free agency, the Eagles are clearly well-positioned to bounce back and again compete for the NFC throne in 2024. Blew it, Buffalo Bills. We know that the Bills had a tough salary cap situation heading into the offseason, but that doesn't mean that they had to be this quiet during the early weeks of free agency. Star center Mitch Moore and standout defensive backs Tredavious White and Jordan Poyer were cut in cap-saving moves. The team also bid farewell to safety Micah Hyde, wide receiver Gabe Davis, and sack specialist Leonard Floyd. And so far, Brandon Bean's big move was overpaying Curtis Samuel. The ex-Washington and Carolina Whiteout signed a three-year deal worth $24 million, an awfully generous sum for a guy who has exceeded 800 receiving yards in only one season. The Bills didn't sign any other impact players in the first three weeks of free agency, nor did Bean make a blockbuster trade. This team has lost so much talent on both sides of the ball, and Bean has just done next to nothing to help this roster actually remain a Super Bowl contender in 2024. But hey, which other teams do you think won 2024 NFL free agency, and which ones do you think blew it big time? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, well, subscribing is a great idea. Because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.